smoking. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I read The Guardian, yeah. just I think I've heard of that, but I haven't ah, seen the yeah. website. <laughs> Good. Um, okay, well, when the guys can get yellow. Uh, we are SB, take an eye in. Rolling. We're doing a Guardian special screening. Okay. So they like it. Alexis saw it, loved it. Okay, good. Um, I was going to ask, what do you think of this place? Yeah, it's good. There's a special offer going on today, two for one, apparently. <laughs> 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 this, yeah. place, this place has always had a kind of edge, you know. It did in our day. Even the Blitz, the nightclub, uh, Steve Strange and Rusty Egan uh, run on Tuesday nights. It had a kind of edge to it. Yeah, know? I mean, and I walking mean, in here today, yeah. it's still, yeah, it's still it's got the edge. edge. Yeah. I mean, yeah, given, given uh, yeah, its present in, you know, incarnation, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think there were more exotic outfits when we were here. <laughs> Yeah, it's all very well, London's, London's full of these great venues, these great streets, and a lot of them are just ghosts and memories. Yeah. And so, but I think it's important to preserve some of that information. So when you walk down that street, you 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 know you're, you're you know you might be with the pre-Raphaelites, the Bloomsbury set, the Blitz kids. Yeah, oh, I've walked past mm. you know Dickens' on first gig the other day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It says that we played here um, thirty odd years ago, which I think I think is fantastic. What a lovely yeah. lovely thing yeah. to have in yeah. London. Famous at last. <laughs> um, I was wondering, um, with this um, documentary, did you um, want to agree to it because it was uh, brutally honest, it was quite a frank documentary about your career? Well, we well, wanted a film that was yeah. like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Where it, the brief really to George was make a film that people who yeah. don't necessarily like Spano Valley would still find interesting. It's be about an era, make it something more than just a documentary. No talking heads, so only voiceovers, so lots of archive, not just archive about the band, but yeah, we have a good story. We have an interesting story. We have a, you know, a smash up, and it is about relationships, and that all has to be in there. But it's so also good. about. I mean, the eighties was quite an important decade in terms of political, economic change. I mean, we're going through a massive, different, you know, change as a country. Also, Live Aid for me was the birth of modern day charity, as we know, and the backdrop, you know, fantastic backdrop. But here you've got this kind of glamorous band, who are playing this great music, and it's. Um, I, 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 it's very hard for us to watch, very hard for me to watch. Uh, I think the breakup section is particularly, you know, you can see the slow disintegration. But you know, just interested in the relationships, those nuances that she finds in footage that wasn't broadcast, you know, between me and Tony or whatever it might be, little things that go on, the pressures that build up and the tensions have, you know, nothing to do with the chart positions, you know, but. Everything to do with living in each other's so much pockets. of it that we've never seen before. And, and we had to be honest and, and leave it to George to put it together. And she's done a fantastic job. I think she's done a great job. And um, what was it like seeing yourselves on screen? Um, Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like good. watching myself on screen. Of, you know, we're but. proud of what, all the looks, all the haircuts, you know, all the outfits. They were groundbreaking and dangerous and edgy at the time. You know, they might look a bit weird now. But at the time, you walked, walked along, you were really proud. Had. Yeah, stand by it all. Stand I mean, by the crowd, uh, you know. Look at that. I mean, there you go. There's that's a pretty look. Good. That's pretty cool. You know, Stop come on. I mean, you know, you're not going to get some 90s shoegazing band from Berry looking like that, are you? What, standing in their overcoats? And come the funny thing is, is that wasn't just because we were in a band. There were all our audience would look like that, and not because of us, but because that we were kind of stepping up from the audience wearing those clothes. It was a great, very exciting, creative period. Brave new world, absolutely. I, th- I just think, you know, here we are, we've got a plaque outside in central London, we've got a movie about the band. That in itself is, how many people get that? Not many bands get that kind of, that amount of attention well, I, I and this it, amount of attention. Uh, I think the band's well. getting the attention at the moment as well because our story is interesting. It's not just a straightforward, you know, builds up to the climax type, you know, rockumentary. It, this is a story about, you know, the, the ups and downs of being in a band. And our relationship, yeah. we're all on an a, a emotional journey in life and our one took a few turns, some ups and downs, and I think that, that makes good, good, good reading, good visual, good, f- good well, film. Yeah. Well, thank you, I'm glad you enjoy it anyway, I mean, you know, it's brilliant. We're getting a great response from the film. I really, so I really like cool. the first part of the film, which shows London in the 60s and the kind of background yeah, that we came yeah. from, very working class background. Some great old footage of London parties and London streets. A kind of lost tribe, really, a sort of white working class that you, isn't really part of London so much anymore now. And, uh, and I think that's really fascinating. I love that old sort of footage. You know, George came from 
uh, Julian Temple stable. She worked with him on London Modern Babylon and, and two or three others of his films, archive films. And I think they're really strong films. And I, you know, we wanted her because of, of, of that pedigree. I love the soundtrack as well with Andy Newley. I've oh, appeared at that, but yeah, right. yeah. it's pretty, mods and yeah. So and, it's and, not just about us. Yeah, I mean, and families used to have parties like that all the time, and it was it was I mean, that, that's true. an innocent time and a it, different time. It's know? about people like us. Mm. That's that's yeah. that's really what the film is about. That's where we came from. Mm. There are definitely I like the angle of the history and grounding reality. Yeah, I mean that's what yeah. I, I love about the film. I love that background. It's cool. And what do you think about the it's just very different. It's, I mean, this is a really prime example of how different it is because when we played the Blitz, you know, n there was there's only two photographs of the two gigs that we played here that survive. Mm -hmm. No footage at all, and we never let record companies in through the door. So people wanted to sign us, and they didn't even know what we sounded like. You know, it was possible to build up a great deal of mystique, and that isn't possible now. There aren't the music venues in London no. that, that people go to discover a new band or can't get in and wish they could get in. There's only the internet to sell yourself on, really, and, and that's so, there's something rather overexposing about the but internet, as we that, know. But saying that, it, you know, it's just as hard. You know, there's still 30 bands that want to be it's much harder number one I, 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 in now. the top 30. So uh, you just have to do it in a different way, and kids today grow up thinking in a different way than we did. I, I, do, I do think it, it, it's, it's tough on young bands. You know, we, we played lots of different venues and stuff, and. Uh, and I think as a young up and coming band there, they're not the vent, they become comedy clubs or they become, you know, Ponzi wine bars or something. And I, I think that's sad there's not the avenues for young talent to, you know, to, to play in. You have to make, your own, make, it, yeah. make it yourself, mate. You have to deal with what's in front of what, you. What's you know? in front of you? I yeah, think it's, it's just changed. It's very different. Yeah. We haven't got CDs, it? we haven't got LPs. It's streaming now, you know. I think, yeah. I think what made our period unique, though, um, is, is we weren't just coming out of a movement that spawned a band, it was about a band. It was about all different art forms, you know, some great writers came out of there, dancers, milliners, you know, people who made films, all seemed to come out of this one little club, um, this one area of London in, in 1979. And uh, it was that critical mass that was very exciting. And did you um, think the documentary was um, a right thing to do at this time to air any um, grievances just so you can... Um, yeah. we did, we it wasn't an exorcism <laughs> like that, no, but I think it has certainly drawn it to a close, yeah. But no, we were getting on very well before yeah. the film was finished, yeah, yeah we, that we, was okay. We, we put the path behind us back in 2009 when we went back on the road again. So this is just a, a little, this is another little part of the story. Yeah, the story had a, a good denouement then, and um, so we don't want to drag that one on. Yeah. That was a good point to, to, be, to end it's, the story. It's got the, lovely, it's got the lovely happy ending on the film, which is great, it which is the Isle of Wight, which is... It was uh, a cathartic yeah. experience, I think, yeah, looking yeah. at it. You yeah, know, so you, we could, each one of us, because it was shot by George and uh, put together by George, you know, each one of us could kind of see our mistakes so out of that, you could, it was a cathartic experience. Yeah, it's therapy. I mean, it's better than mm. Motorhead or you know, Metallica getting a therapist in to, where is that therapist, to the studio. By the way? Um, where, where, I'm where, here, where, where darling. Where yeah, I'll be over in a minute. <laughs> I never knew James Milner went to the Blitz. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah. What? Thanks, mate. Cheers. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank you